Deeper Cinema analyzes The Outlaw and His Wife, a 1918 film directed by Victor Shostrom. The Outlaw and His Wife is a seminal work in silent cinema. It is renowned for its breathtaking landscapes that are not only there to fascinate the audience, but are actually central to the plot of runaways trying to hide from justice, and their sense of loneliness is even more striking with no one in sight in all that vastness. The film also has compelling characters in that emotionally resonant storytelling and remains a timeless masterpiece that continues to captivate audiences more than a century after its release. The story is adapted from a 1911 play by Johan Sigurjansson and is set in the rugged Icelandic countryside, although the film was actually shot in northern Sweden. The outlaw and his wife tells the story of Kari, a humble farmer who finds himself on the run from the law after a tragic accident. Forced to flee his home and leave behind everything he holds dear, this now outlaw embarks on a journey of loneliness and despair that will test his courage, resilience, and capacity for love. What makes it more devastating is that he inadvertently involves Havala in this horrible situation, a strong-willed widow who falls in love with him and endangers her solidified social status and becomes his partner for better or for worse, mostly worse. Together, they forge a bond that transcends the boundaries of law and morality. As they navigate the challenges of life on the run, they find solace and strength in each other's arms, drawing closer together with each passing hardship and possibly crossing a certain point of no return. Victor Shostrom had been directing since The Gardener in 1912, and it is clear that he evolved a lot in those six years from that film to this one. The camera is now part of the action and not only shooting from afar, and his sense of framing and composition is already commendable, and impressively so for a 1918 film. His direction has lyrical beauty and poetic sensibility, as he captures the untamed majesty of the Swedish landscape with stunning visual imagery. From sweeping vistas of snow-capped mountains to intimate close-ups of rugged cliffs and cascading waterfalls, the film's cinematography evokes a sense of awe and wonder that mirrors the emotional journey of its protagonists. Credit is due also obviously to a great cinematographer like Julius Jensen. Sweden had already proven that it had a great school of cinematography, and no one could shoot landscapes in rural settings like them, and Julius Jensen was a giant in that field, setting a tradition that would continue to be honored in the 50s onwards with legends like Gunnar Fischer and Sven Nykvist. Although the cinematography was breathtaking and all that, Without great actors the film might have been only beautiful to look at, but not that remarkable after all. Much of the film's success is due to the mesmerizing performances of its leads. Victor Shostrom himself acts as Kari and Edith Irastoff as Hayala here, and they were lovers in real life during the shooting, to a point that Edith Irastoff got pregnant and would give birth to one of their child soon after, in what was then a clandestine relation, since she was still married to another man. Maybe that also helped their performances, since they were also in a strange situation that would only get solved once she divorced and married Shostrom right away, in 1922. Edith would die by his side in 1945, showing that both in film and in real life they really had a strong bond to each other. All that helped for Shostrom to show a brooding intensity to his role, capturing the character's inner turmoil and moral ambiguity with remarkable depth and nuance. Meanwhile, Irastoff imbued Haala with a fiery spirit and fierce determination that made her a force to be reckoned with in the film, but still a person who might get too close to the point of utter despair. The outlaw and his wife is indeed notable for its thematic richness and moral complexity as it grapples with timeless questions of justice, loyalty, and the nature of freedom. Through the character of Kari, Shostrom explores the tension between individual desires and societal expectations, as well as the enduring struggle for autonomy and self-determination. As the couple navigate the treacherous terrain of their outlaw existence, they are forced to confront the consequences of their actions and the true meaning of loyalty and sacrifice. In one of the film's most memorable sequences, Havala and the outlaw find refuge in a remote mountain cabin, where they are pursued by a relentless posse determined to bring them to justice. As the tension mounts and the stakes escalate, Shostrom ratchets up the suspense with masterful precision, leading to a breathtaking climax that leaves audiences on the edge of their seats, although the final outcome is a little too hard to be believed and swallowed by the audience. But that sense of constant danger is made possible by another great performance, this time of John Ekman, who plays a jealous man who sees Haala falling for the outlaw and wants revenge much more than he wants justice. He is relentless and will stop at nothing until he brings the couple to justice, whatever that may be. 
If he can't have Ha'ala, maybe he can destroy her and the man she loves. A small-minded man even in all that vastness can still be very dangerous. Victor Sjöström here proved that he was a top director, actor and even screenwriter not only in Sweden but worldwide. Everybody took notice of his talent, and in a few years he would emigrate to America and also have success there, in films like The Scarlet Letter, He Who Gets Slapped and The Wind. Edith Erastoff maybe fell in love with him with the same intensity that Hala fell for the outlaw in the film, with far less tragic results of course, but still she somewhat sacrificed her film and theater career to raise their children. John Eggman, who also had played a small part in Sjöström's debut in The Gardener in 1912, kept working and made many movies in Sweden, and his last one was for Ingmar Bergman's To Joy, in 1950, a distant 32 years later. The Outlaw and His Wife is a solid Sweden's classic not only of the 1910s but of all times, and showed the world that cinema was quickly evolving and already deserved much more respect than many intellectuals of that time were willing to concede. Here was a resounding story that was superbly filmed and proved that silent pictures could be profound and moving and were already on their way to conquering the world and setting cinema as the most established and popular form of art of the 20th century. This was an analysis of deeper cinema to the film The Outlaw and His Wife, directed by Victor Sjöström, a film that was ranked third place by the channel in the period of 1895 to 1919. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much and we hope this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship.